selected poems by Japanese Zen monk and poet Jakushitsu Kenko. First poem A visit to Nakayama in Kibi. Scenic spot, thousand year old temple, buildings amidst clumps of trees, groves of bamboo, scattered flowers buried along the path, pheasant cries in a deserted mountain. The guest arrives before daybreak, homeward journey trampling moon on the road. Who has graced these walls with an illuminating verse, ashamed as I add my own clumsy harmonizing poem? Second poem for the Zen man in Messenger from Shushoi. Messenger, Messenger, your mission is not to be mocked. You'll be honored throughout Zen monasteries. When your forthright speech touches our teacher, grasshoppers bathed in autumn moonlight will cry deep into the night. Presented to the priest Chin as he departed on a pilgrimage. A man of Zen pays a visit. I search for a verse to send him off, secretly scrutinizing my withered heart, not a phrase to offer him. The moon shines on deserted mountains autumn advances another poem rain in autumn look at the moon before you point or speak illuminating the sky an unstained round light. If your face doesn't possess the monk's discerning eye, you become blinded by evening rains of autumn. Two poems presented to priest Rezo. I rise before dawn to the sound of wind in the pines cannot count old companions half must be gone when will they bury my rotten bones and will this wild mound of earth disturb your leisurely dreams my mountain temple gate extends to town how can i endure the daily hustle and bustle i could buy a hoe for a hundred copper coins spend my remaining years cultivating the green mountain two connected poems for the temple librarian you We never exchanged letters or chatted, only shared phrases of ancient masters. Nothing more was needed. Your old friend with his habitual sloth does not inquire into the details of your life. 
In the southeast, the moon shines over the sea. Sky is clear. Arousing thoughts of eternity in noble men. You pluck out a tune on your stringless tune, on your stringless lute. Who can hear this wondrous sound in the wind? Another poem, Chrysanthemum Festival. Sun not yet up. I sweep leaves, stand at garden's edge. West wind blows on bamboo hedge. Hem of robe wet with dew. A mountain child appears, picks a chrysanthemum, tells me of today's festival. Next poem, Narishika's Grave. His life given for imperial cause, only his name remains. Pathetic sight, grizzled grave buried in moss. Ancient Nakayama, still spring day fragrance of a flower in the rock calling the dark spirit back next poem cherry blossom viewing at Moroyama people playing in hills and meadows bright afternoon I come upon a temple garden flush with flowers. A monk passes through a jeweled shadow of trees. Exquisite flowers thickly grown. A bush warbler hidden in their midst. Embracing the stone pavement they color the moon over the mountain, fluttering around the window. They grace the incense smoke, a splendid scene, rarely viewed since I've become old. Eyes drunk with this sight, mind going mad. Next poem, A Visit to Hatoji Temple. Lone mountain dominating three provinces. White clouds cover a green peak. Summit soaring to great heights. Old temple nearly a thousand years a monk meditates alone in a moonlit hall a monkey cries in the mist in an old tree saying to worldly folk come here free yourselves of karmic dust Next poem, On the Way to Cone. Wondrous rocks, curious crags, blue mountain stream, wide clouds, red trees, autumn's evening sun. I've traveled the mountains of Wu and visited the waters of Chu, but the joy of this beautiful journey 
has no equal. Next poem, Buddha's Nirvana. Teacher of the three worlds enters Nirvana. Humans and heavenly beings weep as one. Flowers that decorate valleys and mountains in spring. I mistake for red leaves in an autumn wind. Someone asked Chao Chu, What is the way? Chao Chu answered, Outside the fence. The questioner responded, Not that. I'm asking about the great way. Chao Chu said, The great way passes through the capital. Next poem. Sending the high priest Chu off to the capital. Eighth and ninth months. Scenic season. Geese cry once, twice, announcing autumn's coolness. Your passage clearly has public sanction, so move ahead boldly. The great way passes through the capital. In harmonized rhyme, an evening talk. Enemies from generations past gather one evening in a mountain hut. Angry words, repeated reproaches. Regurgitating everything. Then coins tied around their waist, they mount a crane and fly to the state of Yang. Next poem, Thoughts of a Friend. Mountain Temple hide of spring yet no one comes to visit garden vacant flowers falling carpeting moss I want to freeze this ever-changing scene but I don't know how the thoughts of the good friend I've been waiting for won't fade away with age this secluded life suits me under a carefree cloud in the shade of a crag i make my bed waking from my afternoon nap with three cups of tea i view the thousand peaks and push open the gate. Kui, a day of gathering tea leaves, and I hear only your voice. Shan, I don't see your form. Show me your true form. Yang Chan shook the tea branches. Kui, You've shown me your function, but not your shan. Form, I still don't see you. Yang Shan, what about you, master? 
Kyushan was quiet for a while. Yangshan Master, you've shown me your form, but not your shan, but not your function. From a conversation while gathering tea recorded in the Cheng Ti Shuang Teng Lu. Next poem Gathering Tea To the branch's edge and the leaves under surface be most attentive. Its pervasive aroma envelops people far away. The realms of form and function can't contain it. Spring leaks profusely through the basket. <laughs>